If you're thinking about buying a dedicated astrophotography camera, there's a lot of questions that you'll be asking yourself. You'll be asking yourself whether you should buy a monochrome camera or a color camera. You'll also be asking yourself things like, do I need cooling for the camera? Because you notice that for the same sensor, same characteristics of the camera, the same manufacturer might be offering an uncooled version of the camera and a cooled version of the camera and sometimes something in between as well. And we'll go to the, into this cooled versus uncooled topic in this video. So first, let me talk about, with regards to cooling, the typical three types of cameras that you see. You have the uncooled cameras, which are just like normal DSLRs, for instance. They don't have anything to regulate the temperature of the sensor of the camera. And because sensors will have things like electricity running through them, they tend to become warmer than the ambient temperature around them. So an uncooled camera with a given sensor uh, will tend to be smaller, lighter, and also cheaper than a cooled camera with the same sensor and characteristics otherwise. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have tech-cooled cameras, like the one that I have here. They're much larger, bigger, and heavier. So you can see mine is like from there to the end uh, here. And it has some grid fins here to dissipate heat. And so what's happening is that affixed to the back of the sensor in there, there is an element called a Peltier cooler. And this is an element where if you run electricity through it, one side will become very, very cold and the other side will become very, very hot. It's an exchange of temperature effectively. And because of that, you can make the sensor temperature go to something between minus 30 degrees Celsius to minus 40 degrees Celsius below the ambient temperature. And at the same time, you, it's regulated in that you can actually tell the camera that you want to cool to a very specific temperature, such as I want to cool my camera to minus 10 degrees Celsius, which is what I typically run my camera at when I am imaging uh, stars, nebulae or galaxies. So what is the point of that? What is the point of cooling your sensor? There's a lot of points to cooling your sensor, and I'll get to that in a moment. First, let me go into the type of camera that's in between the uncooled and the cooled camera. In my opinion, it's much closer to uncooled. It is a fan-cooled camera. So it will look a bit like this one. It will have like fins on the side to dissipate heat. Just like this one, there will be also a fan inside that will be turning to kind of like make the air flow around and dissipate the, the heat. But because uh, this fan-cooled camera doesn't have any Peltier cooler within, the best it can do is to cool down the sensor to ambient temperature and nothing more. So you'll have uncooled cameras, they'll have sensor temperatures that go above ambient, you'll have fan-cooled cameras that try to go towards the ambient temperature, and then you'll have regulated tech Peltier cooled cameras like this one that you can set a target temperature for and that then can go between minus 30 and minus 40 degrees below ambient, which is massive. So why do we have cooled astrophotography cameras? Because on the face of it, they're bigger, heavier, more expensive than uncooled cameras. So there must be a reason. And yes, yes, there is. The reason is the thermal noise that accumulates in your sensor as you expose. Basically speaking, a sensor, a camera sensor, whether it's in, in your DSLR, your smartphone, or in a dedicated astrophotography camera, the way that it works is that photons, the particles of light, will fall onto the sensor pixels, and they'll be converted to electrons. So you have electrons that kind of gather into the pixels, and at the end of the exposure, the camera will read how many electrons were gathered in each pixel. And the more the electrons, the brighter the image for that pixel is uh, because it received more photons. That's great. The problem is camera sensors, they will also spontaneously generate electrons even if they haven't received photons. And one of the ways this can happen is with thermal noise. Uh, basically, the warmer a camera sensor is, the more likely it will be to generate electrons without receiving any photons. And actually, it's like this likelihood per unit of time increases. What that means in practice is if I have a very warm sensor and I do one minute exposure, I will get far more electrons that are not related to photons or light at all. They're only related to heat. Then if I run the same sensor for one minute exposure in a cooled process, so that's a huge advantage right there. There is a very specific noise difference between the 
cooled sensor that I could have here and the uncooled sensor that is above ambient temperature. Of course, even with an uncooled sensor, you can take amazing pictures. I mean, people do that with DSLRs all the time. And you have ways to mitigate the impact of that, those uh, impromptu heat-based electrons, uh, such as taking dark frames and uh, also doing operations such as dithering, which means that in between each image are several images that you take of the target. You move the telescope slightly so that the, uh, the pixels don't fall on top of each other. And so when you average out the frames, you kind of try to average out also the thermal noise that was generated in the sensor. But the problem with that is that while you're averaging things around, you're able to kind of get rid of what we call the fixed pattern noise. You're not able to get rid of the randomness of, the, uh, of those electrons being in your sensor generated due to heat. And that is what is causing the issue. So I wanted to test that out. And fortunately, I have a very simple way to test this out because I have this camera and I can choose what temperature I run it at. I can even choose to have it not cooled at all. So I wasted some imaging time yesterday on M101 Galaxy uh, running this camera one hour uncooled and then one hour cooled. <laughs> and with the uncooled version, I took uh, also matching dark frames right after I finished taking the uh, one hour of exposures with the uncooled sensor. So do I expect to see a massive difference? Surprisingly, not that much, because even on uncooled camera, the thermal noise uh, is almost negligible when I have light pollution noise that is overwhelming it completely, because I'm in Tokyo. But if you're in the suburbs, like a Bortle 4 or 5 or better zone, then thermal noise starts to become more and more prominent as a source of noise compared to sky glow or light pollution. But you know, with my assumption that I don't think I'll see such a huge difference, uh, let me check the actual results together with you. Okay, I have stacked one hour of data with the camera cooled to minus 10 degrees Celsius and one hour of data with the camera uncooled, same camera. And I did these one hours, they were each 30 frames of 120 seconds long each. And uh, I, was, I took them right before the meridian flip and right after the meridian flip, which basically means that the target was at the same altitude for both. So it should have been subjected to roughly the same amount of light pollution from here in Tokyo using my telescope that's at f7.5 with the extender that I have on it. For the cooled version, I calibrated it with bias frames, nothing else, no flats. And for the uncooled version, I calibrated it with dark frames that I took right after the uh, light's exposure. I've done the integration of each separately. They're on my screen. And let's have a look. Before that, by the way, just want to tell you, if you want to have access to my videos in advance and without ads, one way to do so is to join my Patreon. If that sounds interesting, you could go and check the link in the description. Anyway, let's go back. So here we have our two frames uh, and there's more of a difference than I expected. The one on the left is the uncooled version. The one on the right is the cooled version. And I'm almost wondering whether it was some kind of error, uh, a user error from my side. Let me know down in the comment what you think. But my thought was that the thermal noise would have been negligible compared to my light pollution noise. But be maybe because M101 gets so high in the sky and I took the images right before and after the meridian, I was less affected than I expected by light pollution. I'm not sure. Uh, both of them were taken through a luminance filter, nothing else, no light pollution filter. So that's kind of weird because the, the image on the left is the uncooled one. And uh, I, the only thing I did is an automated background extraction and uh, a screen transfer function. And we can see there's far less details in the arms of the galaxy. Like if you look at here, I see like a lump in this spot on the right hand side, but on the uncooled version, it's not there at all. It's kind of lost in what appears to be additional noise. And I checked the individual frames as well. It's the same story. And I wanted to check whether there was any haze that I didn't notice, but I didn't see any. And I'm actually a bit shocked 
at how different they are, because again, I was expecting to see something very similar in a very light polluted uh, area that I am in. I mean, even like this arm of the galaxy is much clearer, even though by no means pretty, on the cooled version than it is on the uncooled version. So yeah, uncooled on the left, cooled on the right. The cooled definitely has more details. If there was no user error, it truly means that yeah, in any area that you are, unless you're imaging from Times Square, uh, yeah, a cooled astrophotography camera will provide uh, advantages in terms of thermal noise, but not only thermal noise. Anyway, let me go back to my telescope and discuss with you some more. Huh, so those results were a bit surprising to me. I, I was expecting to see almost the same thing, but even then it's so it looks like the cooled camera has had a slight advantage over the uncooled camera. Yeah, I expected to see less difference, but you can see that even the uncooled camera, it can take great pictures. Obviously, this is 1R at f7.5 on this uh, telescope with its extender. Uh, so it's a slow telescope and it's not the best result ever and it's in Tokyo, but you can get great pictures with an uncooled camera. It's just going to be much easier with a cooled camera because the noise aspect of it is just one part. What I would argue is very important and probably even more important is the ability to set a target temperature. Because when you use an uncooled camera, after you've taken your light frames of your target, you absolutely have to take dark frames because they need to be roughly at the same temperature. And you cannot choose that temperature. That temperature is whatever is the ambient temperature plus whatever delta you have on top of that due to electricity running through your sensor. So it's very difficult to reproduce. And so whenever you want to have matching uh, dark frames with your uh, light frames or matching bias frames with your light frames, it becomes so much more complex because you need to keep track of all of those libraries of darks that you have. In the past, when I had, when I was using a DSLR, I actually wrote a program, a Python program that would sort through all of the dark frames that I had taken and find the ones that were more or less matching my light frame within a certain tolerance. And so I had tons of workarounds that just were made completely obsolete the moment I switched to a cooled camera. Because then I set it to minus 10 degrees. It's always at minus 10 degrees. I can take a set of dark frames at minus 10 degrees and reuse that for a year. I can take a set of bias frames at minus 10 degrees and reuse that for a year. I can even take flat frames at this minus 10 degrees and just keep reusing the same flat frames as long as I don't change anything in the imaging train. It makes the whole imaging so much easier and it is absolutely great for a lazy geek like me. And so that's why I would recommend if you're thinking about buying a dedicated astrophotography camera is if you can afford it to go to the words, the cooled, Peltier cooled version, not the fan cooled version, a Peltier cooled version where you can set your target temperature because it makes everything so much easier. Actually looking back on it, looking back at my 14 years of experience in astrophotography, I wish I had started just with cold cameras. Let's say you have the choice between a, an APS-C size sensor in an uncooled camera or a square sensor that's one inch in a cooled camera, like the, the 533 type of camera. They are the same price. I would go 100% of the time towards the smaller sensor. Even if I'm losing field of view, even if it's a square sensor, I don't care the cooling will more than make up for it. So that is my way of looking at it. You can do whichever you want. Obviously, you can achieve excellent results with uncooled cameras, but it's gonna be more difficult. <laughs> so it's really up to you to set your priorities. I've given my opinion, and I think I've given you the tools and the information for you to also make a decision with regards to whether you want to go cooled or uncooled. So please let me know your opinion down in the comments below while you go on your way there. You can like the video, join the channel, or join my Patreon if you want to have early access to my videos without any ads. And also if you want to make the channel possible because you guys surely do. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars or the clouds here and I'll see you next time.